Now, before I do these videos, I want to put the warning out there to those of you that are with the channel but are squeamish about meat, particularly this is gonna be a pig's head recipe. Some of you will not like it, so I say, turn off now, don't watch this one, come back when I'm doing videos that you'll enjoy. If you're gonna stay, you're gonna to learn today how to make brawn, I think the Americans call this head cheese, and we're going to be introducing you to, now, turn away now if you're not interested, the pig's head. Okay, this is, this is me, that's the pig's head. Uh, we're going to be taking this pig's head and uh, ideally you want to get your butcher to cut this in half for you. I've got two pig's heads. One of them I'm going to be making guanciale, which is like a pancetta. That's another video, tune in for that one. And one we're going to be making brawn. So ask your butcher to cut the pig's head in half or even into quarters if you like. Now let's get on. I'm going to show you how to make brawn. Now I like to brine the pig's head for 24 hours before we make the brawn and that is to give a sort of hammy flavour. I do think it really greatly improves. Now I use a plastic tub like this. You must use either plastic or ceramic. Don't use metal, it reacts with the salt and will spoil the meat. I'm going to add one kilo of salt into my tub and then I'm going to add a litre of hot water in there. That's just to allow the salt to start to dissolve. Now you can do this on the stove top if you like. Then to the hot water, I'm going to add two liters of cold water. We'll just give that another stir around. Now, three liters generally is enough to cover the pig's head completely. I'm going to lift the pig's head now and I'm going to pop it into the brine. I'm going to add about another half a liter of water in there just so they're completely submerged. Now I'm gonna cover this and pop this into my fridge for 24 hours. That'll chill the water down and allow this to pickle slightly. All right, come back and join me when it's done. Okay, it's been 24 hours. The heads have been pickling in the salt brine and we need to get a stock pot on now. I've got my biggest stock pot here. This is about a 20 liter, I think. I'm gonna put a couple of onions, brown onions, some carrots, bay leaves, a little bouquet garni of rosemary and thyme. I've got some black peppercorns, which I'm just going to crack up in the mortar and pestle before I pop them in and maybe a couple of sticks of celery. So pop these into the pot, come back in a moment. Okay, so I've just roughly chopped up those vegetables. In goes the bokeh garni. Now we're going to get our pig's head, pop it on top of that. And then what we're going to do is top the whole pot up with water. Now I've completely submerged the meat into the water and we are going to take this stock pot, I'm going to pop it down for a moment, we're going to take this over to the stove, we're going to bring this up to a simmer, a rolling boil, and just keep an eye on it, you might need to top up the water and take any scum that comes on the top. We're going to cook this for four to five hours until that meat is so tender, it's just going to fall away from the bone. Come on, let's get it on. Now you'll see that I had a lid on my stock while I was boiling it. I'm just gonna take that off there now, but you can see it's boiling away. I'm gonna turn the heat off now. Now my heads have been boiling in there for about four hours and I haven't had to take much muck off. If you do need to, just skim it off at the top. Now we're gonna leave the heads in there for about 15 minutes or so till they've cooled down. Then we're gonna take them out and we will be taking the meat off of there. But this stock that's in here, I'm gonna clarify it. I'll show you how we do that later. But this has got so much flavor in, so don't waste it. Let's take it off the stove. So it's gonna be pretty tricky. You've gotta get those whole heads out of that and let them cool down on the side. Now, it's been tricky getting the pig's head out, but look at all this beautiful stock. And I've put the pig's head now on a tray here. I'm going to let this completely cool down. When it's cool enough that I can pick through it, I'm gonna separate the meat and the fat into two different bowls. I'm gonna keep some of the fat for my brawn or head cheese or whatever you like to call it. But in the meantime, look at all that beautiful stock. The smell coming off there is delicious. Now I'm gonna clarify that to a consomme or a clear stock by using the vegetables that are in there and some egg white. I'll show you how we do that. Let's get going. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna get any of the vegetables that I can out of this stock, lift them up and pop them into this bowl. I've separated the bokeh garni. I'll be taking the bay leaves out of there as well. I just want the vegetables in there. Now, bear with me here because some of the basic principles of making a consomme I'm gonna be using, but it might be a little bit abstract. Come down here. I've got all the vegetables out and I want to actually chop these up or mash them uh, till they're like a, almost a puree. Now they've started to cool down as well. There's a little bit of uh, herb in there as well. It really doesn't matter. 
What we're doing is creating some solids that we can build a raft with to float on top of our stock. I've got three egg whites here and this is cooled down a bit so they shouldn't cook off. I'm going to pop the egg whites in there and whisk it through with my vegetables. And then what we're going to do is pop that back in our stock. Give that a good whisk through and we're going to take that over to the stove and start to reheat it. What's going to happen is the solids are going to float to the top and they're going to create a sort of raft, a floating raft, and start to clarify our stock. Come on back to the stove. So I want to bring this back up to the heat. I'm just gently stirring it through as I do so and the egg whites and the solids in there are going to start to draw together. So I'll try and explain what's happening here. We've got this on a simmer. I don't know if you can see a little bit of motion in the water there. It's not quite a boil, but it's simmering. And every now and again, some of the solids are coming up and creating a raft on the top. It's nowhere near ready yet, but over about sort of 20 minutes or 30 minutes, all the solids are going to come to the top and then we're going to use a ladle and we're going to break a little hole in the center of the raft let all the final solids come up through and underneath is going to be this wonderful clear consomme or a stock that's beautiful and clear so now you can see the raft has formed on the top here so we've got that beautiful hole there in the center the raft is nice and solid so all i'm going to be doing now is skimming the center and basting over the top of the raft until we get a wonderful clear consomme in the center. I mean, already now it's starting to get pretty clear. So it is a little extra work, but truly, trust me, this makes such a great stock. It's worth it. So if you come over here, you can see now there's a lovely hole there. The stock in the center is pretty clear, as clear as I want it to be. What I'm going to be doing now is drawing that out. I've got another pan over here. I'm going to be using a sieve, but I'm actually going to put some cotton in here as well. You could use some muslin, but fine cotton is ideal. And what we're going to be doing, if you come back over here and just look in there, I'm going to be drawing all that clear stock out of the center and lifting it over and just pouring it through the cotton. So that's going to take me a little while. Come back and you can see me when I've finished. Now what you're going to end up with is this wonderful, beautiful clear stock and that will make great soups. I'm going to reduce it down, I'm going to boil it down a little bit further so that I can freeze some of it as well. But this is going to be fantastic and it's going to be fantastic in our brawn or head cheese as well. So let's get on. Now I've taken all the meat and the good stuff away from the bone. I've got two big bowls here. This one is a much fattier content. This one is a leaner meat. Now I'll be honest, a lot in the family like the leaner, so I'm going to concentrate on this one at the moment. I've got my consomme here, that beautiful stock which is gonna be perfect for binding it all together. Now I'm gonna be using a loaf tin to set my brawn in. Uh, I've lined it with a little bit of plastic wrap that'll keep it all together. But you could use nice earthenware terrine pots like this. So now I want to get a little bit of seasoning into here. I'm just going to take half a lemon and uh, squeeze the juice of that lemon into the meat. I'll just use a fork to get that juice out of there. Just make sure the pips don't go in. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of this brine just pour it over the meat. I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. See a fair bit of black pepper. And then fresh parsley from the garden. I'm just going to chop this parsley up. So let's just take that parsley and pop it in there. Maybe a little extra of that stock again. Now I'm just going to take a fork and combine the ingredients together. And don't forget, I've already cut these meats up into small pieces or shredded them. And now let's just take that meat and pop it in to our loaf tin. Now I'm just pushing all the meat down with the back of my fork. And we are going to press this in a moment. Now let's take that wonderful stock and start to pour it in there. This is going to bind the whole brawn together. So you can see I've completely saturated the meats there. What I'm going to do now is just bring over that plastic wrap now I want to weight this down while it's set. So I've got another loaf tin exactly the same size. I'm going to pop it on top. I may fill it with water. That is going to go in the fridge until it's completely set. I'm going to put a little parsley decoration on the top. Come back and I'll show you what I'm doing. Now a quick news flash. I decided this loaf tin was too big for my brawn. Actually, it only came up to about there and I wanted something deeper. So I took it out and popped it into a slightly smaller loaf tin and you can see it's set beautifully in there now. So I'm going to take this one out and we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to pop it down onto a wooden board. 
Hopefully it won't be too difficult to ease out of there. There you go, it is coming out and there I can reveal to you. Wow, that looks absolutely beautiful. It's set perfectly. I'm really, really pleased with the way that is set. Now I've got myself a knife. I'm just gonna get this and cut it through. Actually, it's a little bit cold still. Let's bring the knife all the way through there and just take a look at what we've got there. Doesn't that look fantastic? So how are we gonna serve this? Well, I like to treat this a little bit like a react, like a pate, uh, have it on toast. Uh, some people slice it up and they fry it, but I can tell you just as it is, it's going to taste delicious. So there you have it. There is my take on brawn. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's also called head cheese. It's not my favorite word in the world, but anyway, an important point. If you're going to give this a go, make sure you get good pork, ideally free range pork. Now, if you've enjoyed the show, there will be more on meat production in the future. Now, if you didn't like it, you're squeamish about the head cheese and for some reason you hung around, please accept that this is a way of life and people do eat this sort of stuff. So comment down below, let me know what you think, share the love, give this one the thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Be good. Now this is a little unusual for Steve's Kitchen, but it is what I'm passionate about with all other kinds of food from all over the world. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll leave some links up to here to some other videos. And of course, as always, I love to hear your comments. Be good, subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Thank you.